What is well known is that Mount Olympus is the domain of the gods in Greek mythology, is the highest mountain and a dominant landscape feature in Greece. However, it is also the home of a rich and diverse flora and fauna. What I aim to do in this short lecture is to provide an introduction to the wealth of beautiful flowering plants that can be found here. Northern Greece has so much to offer. The town of Edessa features and is named after its towering waterfalls. Prespa Lake lies in the tripoint of Albania, Greece and northern Macedonia, designated an important bird area by BirdLife International. Metsovo, famous for its cheese and wine, is also an important centre for winter sports, whilst the extraordinary rock formations of Meteora host one of the largest complexes of Greek Orthodox monasteries. However, it is the mountains of northern Greece that are of most interest to botanists and alpine gardeners, and of these, Olympus is the grandest by far. Litahora provides a comfortable entry point with a good choice of comfortable hotels. You can also see from this map why Olympus has such a presence. As well be as being the highest mountain in Greece, it rises up almost directly from the sea. Parking is available at Prionia, from where you can walk up to Refuge A. This can take an hour and a half at a fast walk, but uh, allow a good six hours if you want to botanise en route. After an overnight at Refuge A, you can then follow the E4 path towards the summit of Mitikus, the highest peak on Olympus, and Scolio, the highest, uh, the second highest peak at uh, 2,918 and 2,911 metres above sea level, respectively. So let's step out from Refuge A. On the walk up to Refuge A, you pass from broadleaf forest through Black Pine Zone, and now we're in the Bosnian Pine Zone. Uh, Pinus heldrachii. Notice the distinctive tessellated bark on the trees. The trees will start to thin out now as we approach the tree line at 2,750 metres above sea level. Refuge A is located at about 2,100 metres above sea level. This places it almost in the middle of the altitude range of Viola delphinantha. Uh, violas are incredibly diverse in form, with this one being perennial but with a woody base and with almost needle-like leaves. However, the flower structure is familiar, although uh, it does have an exceptionally long, slender spur. Even more compact is the Broom chemicitisus hirsutus, subspecies Polytrichus. Uh, strictly, it's a chemiphyte, which means it has a woody base with resting buds at or near ground level. Both of these plants are relatively widespread in the Balkans, although the viola has a more restricted distribution and is not a common plant to find. However, Olympus has some 23 species that are endemic to, that is, only found on Mount Olympus. One of these is the very distinctive Campanula oreadum, seen here, true to character, growing from a limestone crevice. It can be found on limestone cliffs almost all the way up to the summits, uh, where obviously there are no more cliffs for it to, uh, <coughs> to grow on. Let's keep trekking towards the summit. As the trees start to thin out, there are many plants of interest on open rocky and scree slopes. Uh, yarrow is a widespread species of Achillea, uh, but this one is a far more garden-worthy. It's uh, Achillea ageratifolia, subspecies Aizuan. Um, it's much larger flowered, of course, than the common yarrow, and the flowers are held singly, not in panicles. Uh, this subspecies of Ageratifolia is found on lime and stone cliffs across north-central Greece. We're now beginning to break out above the tree line. However, the rock-hugging plants so beloved of alpine gardeners stay with us and become the dominant plant form. Reginald Farrer declared that silver saxifrages uh, are the backbone of rock garden. It, it is good advice, although they, they do seem to have declined in popularity or at least availability over the last 40 years or so, which is a great shame. This one is, I believe, Saxifraga sempervivum, 
although the differences between this and sex suffrage of porifilum are a little hard to distinguish for the non-expert. Um, Saxifraga scardica is a charming little plant and a little more striking with its flowers held proudly rather than the drooping habit of Saxifraga sempervivum. The RHS plant finder lists it as available from three nurseries in the UK and at least one of them uh, has it in stock at the time of writing. Uh, a plant for the scree garden or limestone trough it could easily start a lifetime's obsession with porophyllum saxifrages. Caution is needed as we head up to the peaks. The screes are hard to scramble over and the cliff tops are scary and must be treated with extreme caution if the wind gets up or if visibility is poor. However, the E4 path does offer a reasonably safe route, provided you're careful, to some real treasures. Let's start with one of the two Aubrietias found on Olympus, or I should say more correctly, as you probably know, Aubrietas, a name to commemorate the botanical artist Claude Aubrier. Uh, this one is Aubrietta scardica. The other, Aubrietta thessala, is endemic to Palim uh, Olympus. Um, then there is a little uh, viola. Shy at first, but as your eyes get tuned in to picking it out from the rocks, it becomes clear that it is, in fact, quite abundant at, uh, on near the summit. This is Viola stris notata, another of the 23 Olympus endemics. The specific name sounds a bit exotic, uh, but it simply refers to the line stria marked on the petals. A delightful procumbent speedwell, Veronica Thessalica, marks our last Olympic endemic for this lecture. It seems happiest in the summit areas with its branching stems creeping at or just below ground level, making it compact and uh, making compact and highly floriferous mats. So let's take one last look around and head on down the mountain again. As one returns to the broad leaved zone, there is still plenty of interest of course. Lilium chalcedonicum is one of the five lilies native to Greece. Small single flowered specimens like this one have been named uh, Lilium heldreichii, but this just seems to be, that is the single flower and small growth, it seems to be a habitat modification. A range of one to four flowers is, is characteristic of this lily in its natural environment. However, it can develop up to 12 flowers if cultivated in good humus rich soil. Certainly a plant to brighten a damp shady spot. This has been a very brief visit to a mountain that is unique in its combination of dramatic scenery, mythological associations and rich biodiversity certainly worthy of its nomination for inclusion on the UNESCO World Heritage List, uh, which should offer it um, additional funding and, and protection. Uh, I do hope this has piqued your interest, that is, peak with a Q, not a K, as there's so much more to explore and protect on Mount Olympus.